As mentioned, my name is uh, really Ed Branham. John's a family name. Uh, you say John in my household, and the dinner table gets full pretty quick. Uh, both, both myself and Dr. Chuck Lemmy, who are veterinarians um, that serve on the Council for Biologic and Therapeutic Agents, uh, which is one of the councils of the American Veterinary Medical Association, are uh, here this morning to uh, present what we think are recommendations that are important uh, to this aspect of the veterinary community and to uh, pets. We, as representatives of the AVMA, uh, which is the world's largest veterinary association, uh, we speak for approximately 85% of the veterinarians in our nation. The mission of the AVMA is to advance the science and the art of veterinary medicine, and as veterinarians, our utmost concern is the nation's public health as well as the health of animals, particularly those that we are entrusted to care for on a daily basis. First of all, I'd like to thank um, uh, the FDA for the opportunity for us to provide com comments on labeling and on safety standards for foods as they prepare and move forward uh, with implementing the mandates that we've viewed to this point relative to the uh, FDA Amendments Act of 2007. The AVMA applauds the FDA for its continued leadership to protect the public and health through ensuring safe drugs and foods for both people and for pets. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and certainly the FDA uh, is to be commended on its engagement uh, with stakeholders and the general public on issues such as this uh, that are important uh, to the health and welfare uh, of the pets and animals of our, of our nation. While our country's foods certainly are among the most safe in the world, um, the AVMA feels that very strongly that we must do more. Uh, we feel that we can never forget the ingredient contamination that led to last year's pet food recall and the tragic loss of a very large number of beloved pets uh, to our na nation's population, um, as well as the challenges that we faced and identifying and communicating in a timely and appropriate manner um, to those uh, that were both uh, affected uh, by those pet foods as, as well as the veterinary medical professionals who were trying to treat them. Um, during this time frame, AVMA worked very diligently uh, to serve as a resource to both our profession and the public attempting to provide them with timely information and ongoing com communications relative to this event. However, as I'll speak to in a minute, we very much look forward to participating in the formation of a much more formalized, a much more multiple, multidisciplinary uh, program led by the FDA that will help prevent such tragic losses in the future and if indeed they do occur, which as we heard earlier, earlier this morning, the potential always exists. I think the quote was, we cannot test everything that comes into our country. That we are collectively in a position to where we can both recognize and identify the issues in a very expedient manner and collectively disseminate inf inf information to all stakeholders involved and take appropriate actions to mitigate um, the extent of any future tragedies. We come today with, with three specific recommendations. One is the modification of labels of pet food with health claims. Two is the addition of calorie statements on pet food labels. And three, as I just spoke to, is the development of a formalized multiple, multidisciplinary emergency preparedness program led by the FDA that um, we heard other speakers talk about, at least in concept, this morning. Relative to pet food health claims, this is something that has, over the last few years, become of significant concern to vet veterinarians. 
um, both relative to the scope and, and breadth of the variety of pet foods that exist in our country today um, and the uh, breadth of delivery mechanisms that exist to these products to the, to the public. We have everything from private label to major corporate branded products. We have everything from raw and frozen and canned and semi-moist and dry uh, on and on that are available in the marketplace through a number of different retail outlets. Super stores, feed stores, uh, pet stores, veterinarians, etc. There's also an ever-increasing trend that we see as vet veterinarians to include uh, various and sundry um, claims to pet foods and uh, these health claims indicate that the food uh, does more than just meet the nutritional requirements of a healthy pet. <clears throat> Excuse me. For example, um, the food may be marketed to senior dogs with degenerative arthritic disease. And that, and that claim and that product may, may state that it in some way improves, promotes, uh, slows down uh, joint disease and joint health. Slows down joint disease, promotes or improves joint health. Um, from our standpoint, and I think from the standpoint of the FDA personnel we've talked to, uh, we both are in agreement that those are indeed health claims. Um, and far outstretch the realm of uh, comments relative to providing nutritional requirements necessary to maintain health in an animal. Many of these foods are only available through veterinarians in an effort to uh, ensure some form of professional supervision of the foods with these potent or perceived potent therapeutic claims. The AVMA recognizes uh, that by federal mandate, FDA regulates um, pet foods and pet food claims, but also recognizes that the FDA utilizes a significant degree of enforcement discretion in their oversight of pet foods and of pet food claims. And therefore, in many instances, delegating the validation of pet food claims to the veterinary community, specifically clinical practicing veterinarians uh, and or specialty veterinarians or vet veterinarians involved uh, in nutritional uh, science and research. Um, the AVMA is...